Hey guys, and welcome to the Lawrence Garden Farm. If you don't already subscribe, feel free to click that button because you don't want to miss hundreds of gardening and family videos. Today we're going to share how to transfer, transform your window boxes from summer to fall without having to rip out the whole window box. We're in Wisconsin here, so I love fall, but I'm also having a hard time partying with my summer containers because they're still looking great. So how do we do that transition? We're going to share that today. Here's the window box that we will be transitioning into fall. And what we're going to mostly focus on is eliminating those zinnias out of there. They actually shrivel up very easily. And once we get those out, we can plop mums right in between. We're jumping on the ranger and we're going to go down to uh, my family's garden center, pick up a few mums. so I came down to the shop they've got lots of moms they've had a veggie stand all summer and uh, they created these really cute little pots with a little stencil they've got a lot of good stuff all homegrown look at all those veggies look at how beautiful and huge these mums are see look how huge that is so I grabbed three of these orange ones and I'm kind of thinking I, I'm going to come back later for some purple ones. I think the purple would be really pretty mixed with some of the orange pumpkins. So if you're new to our channel, um, this is where I've learned everything I know from growing up on a farm and a family garden center. And uh, now I just kind of grow this huge garden. We keep growing it bigger and bigger and we just keep teaching you guys and sharing it all right here along with our family moments and uh, what we love about Wisconsin here. Another really crazy thing is that the house behind me here is the house that I grew up in my whole life pretty much. So uh, Jason and I lived there for about um, four years. Um, we were saving to build our home and we even had Lana in the home. Um, Lana was officially the ninth generation born in this home. So it was really special uh, to have Lana while we lived there. And um, it's a bit haunted. <laughs> our farmhouse has been in our family since 1838. So it's been a long, long time. And I remember customers would come here. We used to have pick your own produce and like pumpkin farm, all of that here. And people would come to the door, you know, as customers. And um, and then it just grew into this huge garden center. I mean, there's like almost up to 40 greenhouses surrounding the back. And um, it's just insane how big we've grown over the years. And um, three of my sisters are still in the business with my mom and dad. So it's pretty cool. So I just figured you guys would uh, like that little story. But here, I'll show you a little bit. They're covering that greenhouse over there. And then, uh, well, there's lots and lots of greenhouses. And they uh, usually open the last week in April. And then they're usually sold out within a month from then. And they start and grow everything themselves. So it's pretty cool. It was always a lot of work. Worked after school and on the weekends as a kid all the time. And then there's more on that side and that side. But uh, I think that's, that's good for now. And we are back home. Driving through the garden here. What I'm mainly doing is just removing these zinnias because they dry out so quickly compared to everything else in this window box that they're just going to continue to get more and more shabby every single day. So even if it's hard for you to pull something but you know that it's kind of starting to go downhill, you maybe want to just think about, you know, taking that next step and just yanking it and replenishing it with something that looks a little bit more 
lively and healthier and something that will also last through the next season. There's no reason to give up just yet. The gardening season, we still got a couple months, you know, and uh, fall time's always beautiful and it always feels better when you're prepared and that's with anything in life. As I go through and yank the zinnias out, I also go ahead and kind of clean up any old leaves that are on some of the remaining plants. I'm gonna go through and pull any of the other plants that look like they're struggling because we have to make room for those mums. If you can see right here, we have flowering kale and I love planting kale throughout our gardens because it lasts so beautifully through fall and becomes super vibrant as soon as the weather starts to cool down. So we're gonna leave that in there and wherever there's a kale plant, we are going to place a mum in between there. My next step is to dig a hole and make space for that mum. And then I just go ahead and drop a mum in, fill it in, and we take out any varieties we need to in order to fit that mum in. We're gonna put three in there, one on each side, one in the middle. So I pretty much just clear my way for that next mum. This will be a tighter squeeze, but I really don't want to move this Verbena banariensis, and if I have to, then I'll have to, but um, we'll see what we can do. When we're starting this stage of transitioning, I really like to keep some annuals still in there that are performing very well in the box because it, it has a mixture of summer and fall and it's the true capturing of the two seasons starting to clash into one another. And that's why I love so much to mix them in there. So now, as we start going into the temperatures of where they're gonna drop at night, and it's not exactly freezing, but it's cold enough to make some of these tender annuals look a little, a little not so great, uh, that's when we start either yanking them or just letting them die because then it gives that spooky Halloween feel. And anywhere that you have that space in the window box, you can place a pumpkin right on top. Add the perfect touch of fall. Or you can completely pull out the foliage and still place that pumpkin right there for fall. I'm gonna still go ahead and show you a few more ideas with this window box as we go along. Let's head out to the pumpkin patch. I've got Jason with me. He's helping me film because you guys, it is not easy to film your own videos when you're trying to show how to do something. When it's super windy. Well. Super windy today. Yep. grew pumpkins this year. <laughs> good, really good batch this year for a sure. A really good batch. They've always failed for us so we switched the location and uh, we love decorating with them. We're gonna have family over with them. Yep, and... it's definitely the right spot up here. Yeah, um, so my other suggestion then too for decorating, you can go ahead and seed your own pumpkins. It's not expensive. Just make sure that you have them on a part of your property where it's just a little higher, like your garden, in your garden or wherever. Because before we had an area where it was too wet and that's what was really harming them. Yeah, it was a lower area. We're much higher here so it drains better. It doesn't stay wet and, and that's been perfect. Yes, perfect condition. So I'm gonna go in, pick some pumpkins. using the pumpkins to just kind of set on top of some of the foliage that I know will end up dying back 
but for now it just adds that little pop of orange and the mums will be orange and they'll really pop with this beautiful uh, lime leaf potato vine, the margarita, along with this alteranthera and uh, it's got that beautiful purple leaf on it and I'm really just excited to watch these flourish.